when an innocent day trip goes badly wrong. A family of four are stranded in the Arizona desert. Just a nasty situation that progressively got worse. Miles from the highway, they must walk out in the burning sun. This heat is killer, and it kills people every day. Oh, just shoot me. Deep in bandit country, how far will one couple go to save their kids? Run, kids! I guarantee you, if you're gonna kill my kids, I will shoot you. Come back, please! Mama! Mama! Shelly, her two children, and new boyfriend Roger are enjoying an afternoon out in the Arizona desert. My kids both have been raised in the outdoors. Um, Tiffany was attending school, and Michaela had just started kindergarten. <laughs> this is an extra special trip. Shelly's boyfriend Roger has just moved in and wants to make sure everything runs smoothly. What helped the relationship is because the girls really liked Roger. <laughs> he was always very, very kind to me. Tiffany, at nine years old, was always reaching for a father figure. I was like, okay, I guess we're gonna try to make this work because the kids really like you. You seem like a good dad. There you go. The girls are my life and they have always been my life. And I would do anything for them. It's a good break to get out in the desert and it's close enough and you can grab a couple packs of hot dogs and some buns and, you're, and we're good to go. The family have driven from their home 40 miles away. Okay. For Roger, it's new territory. But Shelley has been coming to this area since she was a child. Coming from a family that didn't have a lot of money, the entertainment that we would do as a family is go out in the desert. The Arizona desert is a vast wilderness, covering 120,000 square miles. It's known as one of the world's harshest environments. But for Shelley and the kids, age nine and five, it's a perfect place to take part in one of their favorite activities. It's always fun. Every time we go out, it's fun. Shelly is curious to know how her new boyfriend will get on. Roger was the kind of guy that worked in an office, in air conditioning. And if things needed done at his house, he would have somebody come over and do it. Oh. oh God, my first try. We were just having a good time. Everything was great. The day's gone well. But by four o'clock, Shelly wants to make sure they get home before dark. At night, the desert becomes a sinister place. You don't know who you're gonna run into. There's a lot of illegal trafficking. Shelly's worried about dangers from the nearby Mexican border. Violent gangs patrol the area, threatening anyone in their way. They'll try to run you off the road, or they'll just run right into you. But the dangers of the night are far from everyone's mind as they make the one hour trip back home. The kids are talking, we're laughing and giggling. Shelly's made the journey many times before. Shelly knew that desert better than most anybody else that I know. I, on the other hand, I'm from New Jersey. Today, the family had their picnic somewhere new. Though Shelly knows the desert well, half an hour into their journey home, the landscape looks unfamiliar. I could tell with the weed growth that it wasn't a well-used path. And I remember this road should be well used. Even though she's losing her bearings, Shelly hopes she'll pick up the trail. But I thought, well, we'll just go up this road, see if it leads to a main road that I'm used to. But the road becomes more uneven. And it seems they're going further off the beaten track. We went along till I came to a dry riverbed. Take a look. And the sides of it were pretty steep. I don't think we can make it. Being in a two-wheel drive truck, you do, your only traction is your back tires. I says, oh, I'll drive. I'll get us through there. We'll be out of here in no time. Hoping he can save the day, Roger takes over. The bumper got hung up on the downside, leaving the rear wheels off the ground spinning like this. The family truck is ill-equipped for this type of terrain and is now totally stuck in the sand. Girls, get up. Uh, Roger has a plan to get them out of trouble. We gotta get some sticks and stones, put them under that wheel, and then we'll get some traction and get out of here. I didn't really know what was going on at first. I figured they can get it out. Okay. 
we tried putting more rocks up under the wheels because keep in mind the wheels were this high off the ground because the truck was sit sitting like this. We didn't have shovels, of course. We're just going out to go shooting, right? No, 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 no matter what we did, we just couldn't get enough weight on, the, on those wheels. Okay, I'll call for help. The cell phone that we had, the battery was dead. There was no charger in the truck. I should have just stuck to my, my decision and said, no, we're gonna turn around here. Uh, we're just, we're not even gonna try this. I got in an earful more in that first hour than most people would generally get in a year of being newlyweds. I'm sorry. We had enough provisions on that particular day for one day. With the vehicle stuck and with no way of contacting anyone, Roger knows there's only one option. We're gonna have to stay the night. Shelly knows just how dire their situation has become. From the time the sun sets to the time that sun rises is very dangerous. I only had one thing on my mind, and that was to, to get my girls out of that desert. I don't really remember anybody falling asleep that night. Armed with their skeet shooting gun, Shelly and Roger stay awake in the fear of lawless gangs of human smugglers from the Mexican border. Them themselves have no regard for human, human life, and it don't even matter who it is. It was just praying to God that, they, that the girls would be all right and they wouldn't get hurt or worse. Relieved when the morning arrives without incident, everyone tackles the day with renewed energy. We're encouraged, you know, we're kind of energized to say, my gosh, we can do this. We really thought daylight would help us so that we could see exactly what kind of situation we were in. With the truck still stuck fast, Roger knows he's got to come up with something to get his new family home to safety. Why don't you go play with Tiffany for a moment? My brain started saying, Roger, you better think of something. There was that truck we passed a while back. It may have a jack. There was a Bronco that we had passed. The rims were gone. So we decided, well, let's at least try to get to that Bronco, see if it's got a jack in it, and then we can get started again. It's going to be a four-mile hike back to the Bronco. And with only two small bottles of water, they risk serious dehydration in the ferocious heat. Are you sure? Uh -huh. I know you're told to stay with the vehicle, and I'm thinking the vehicle has AC. But if we sit there at the vehicle, we're going to be there for days. That road's untraveled. Even at seven in the morning, the sun is wearing them down. We knew it was going to be hot, real hot. Not what most people in civilized countries are used to. Not your 85, 90 degrees. Try between 115 and 118 degrees. It's particularly tough on the kids. Their lower body weight means they get dehydrated quicker. Oh, every 20 feet, everybody's sipping water. And, and, and I'm noticing that there's only one, one small sports drink bottle left. We gotta make it last. Tiffany, you know, was already done had enough, and I says, well, let's just get to the Bronco, we'll find the Jack, and we'll, we'll get out of here. Here goes, we're here. The combination of extreme heat and having to stop for the kids means it takes them five hours to walk just four miles to the Bronco. Okay, you just have a nice long rest. Roger will find the tool. We started going through everything. Lifting everything up, thinking there's got to be Jack in here. Damn it! Anything? Nope. When there wasn't a Jack, I think everybody was like, what are we going to do? Roger, Shelley, and the two girls are now in serious trouble. How much water do we have? We had like three inches of water in that Gatorade bottle. With almost no water, Roger knows if he's to get his new family out of trouble, he needs to take drastic action. You stay with them, and I'll go get help. Listen, you'll need to stay in the shade. 
and just count on the fact that I'm going to get back here because I knew I could make a lot quicker time by myself. It was the right decision. I'm going to go get us an open. Leaving is hard, but they're miles from civilization, and he fears the kids won't be able to keep going. I love you girls. Probably the toughest thing that I've ever done in my whole life. Oh, I'll be back before you know it. Huh? Everybody kissed, and I started on a slow jog, actually. He was feeling very guilty. I mean, when he walked away from us, he almost was running. And I'm thinking, you can't do this in the heat. Roger's best chance of help is to find a main road, but he has no idea where he's going. And after just half an hour, he's feeling the effects of the 118 degree heat. It was not so bad at first, but before then, you realize that you better not be breathing through your mouth anymore, because with every breath of that hot air that you're taking in, you're losing that much moisture in your mouth. Roger has been following the only path in the vast wilderness of the desert. Now, as he stumbles to a junction, he's faced with a choice. One way leads out, the other takes him deeper into the desert. There's not much tire tracks, I'm thinking to myself, this definitely is not the way out. Roger chooses the path with more tracks. With Shelley and the girls depending on him, he can only pray he's made the right decision. As Shelley waits for Roger with her kids, she fears for their survival. We were all really getting weak. You have no water. A helpless and almost a hopeless situation. They've pinned all their hopes on Roger, but three miles down the road, he is totally lost. I slowed down for a second and I looked at the enormity of that desert. The sun just boiling down ruthless on your face. With no point of reference in the endless terrain, Roger must do everything he can to keep his bearings. My thought process is that as I find my way out, I darn well better be able to find my way back. By mid-afternoon, with no sign of Roger, Shelley starts to feel desperate. Maybe we should go. What if he comes back, Mama? We discussed it, because me and my mom are both stubborn. I said to the girls, if he dies, if we sit right here, we'll never get help. We have got to walk. Leaving seemed the best choice. But with the sun beating down, and two children in tow, Shelly soon feels the strain. Even though you're raised in Arizona and they say that your blood's thinner, a body's still a body. You still get hot. Kind of like standing next to a fire, but the fire's above your head, and you can feel yourself being burned, and you're running out of complete energy. There's no more energy left. Determined to find help before night falls, Roger has now been walking for eight hours. The grinding heat and the lack of water is one heck of a combination. You're suffering some serious amount of sunstroke. In these conditions, the average person needs two pints of water per hour but Rogers had none all day. Out of nowhere, he sees something that could save him. I thought that there must be something. A cattle trough in the distance could be his lifeline. <laughs> I got mad and started picking up rocks and throwing it at the water trough and kicking it and cursing. And that's when I realized that things were not going to get better in a quick hurry here. Hours after setting off, Shelly and the kids find it hard to cover any distance in the suffocating heat. Let's go and sit. Have a rest. Until now, there's been no sign of Roger. I noticed Roger had started putting cans and bottles and stuff in the trees. Now they arrive at the same junction Roger passed earlier. But unlike him, Shelly recognizes the landscape. And I'm like, 
I know these mountains. If we go straight over those mountains, then home's right over that mountain. Shelly realizes that Roger has taken the wrong road. The one that leads deeper into the desert. She doesn't know what to do. Home's that way. But he went to the right, and if he finds help, he's gonna come back the way he walked. Shelly must decide if her kids will survive the trip over the mountains, or whether Roger will find help first. Come on. Come on. She gambles on Roger, in the hope he succeeds. Our options were not good options. We didn't have a good option in there. As the afternoon draws on, they become more dehydrated. Without water, the body can't flush out poisons or regulate temperature, causing weakness, headaches, and delirium. My head was hurting, and it just hurt to walk. I was so thirsty, my tongue was sticking to the top of my mouth, and I would do anything for water. The thirst, you get so thirsty. If you could have anything in the world, what do you want? A big glass of ice water. At last, they see something in the barren landscape that could help them. They come across the dumped belongings of illegal immigrants. When the illegals get picked up, they have to leave everything they have, so they fit more in the truck, I guess. So we're looking and looking for water jugs and every backpack. Do you think all these people die out here, Mama? No, of course not, honey. Do you think we're gonna die out here, Mom? In my mind, I'm thinking, I don't think we're gonna make it. But at the same time, you can't express that to your kids. Nothing. To be so close to something that you really are in desperate need of. And it's just horrible. Though exhausted, they keep walking. But their thirst is becoming unbearable. There must be some water in there. There must. Hours after Roger, they come to the same cattle truck that he passed earlier. I remember my top lip was stuck to my teeth. It kept driving me crazy, so I'd lick my lips. That didn't even work. What about the cactus? Tiffany has suggested that in her class, she learned that the roots of cactus hold more water than the actual cactus. I can feel some moisture. Well, I don't think so. And you do have moisture underground. But for liquid, no. Though the cactus roots are dry, it gives Shelly a flash of inspiration. I have an idea. I have always heard cactuses hold a lot of water. If I shoot it, I could probably get some liquid out of it and put in this empty Gatorade bottle. Sit back. There's no water. It's almost like a sawdust, like fine wood chips inside it. That's it. There is no liquid whatsoever. Desperation sets in as they face a night in the desert without water. That was it. We were done. Roger knows how dangerous the desert is at night. As the day ends, he can only pray for Shelly and the girls. I was having a one-sided conversation with Shelly. Shelly, I'm so sorry. Telling her that I love her and telling the kids that I love them and that they just need to hang on and believe in me and that I wouldn't let them down, you know? And just praying to God that they were still alive. Shelly and the kids are facing their second night in the wilderness. I mean, you're tired. You got dehydration working against you. You've got that you've been up since the night before and now you're up an another night with no sleep. Come on, come on, girls. We're gonna walk. Weak as they are, they need to make the most of the cooler night temperature of 85 degrees. If we didn't make as much progress as we could that night, come the next morning, we weren't making it through the next day. Okay, we'll take a walk, and then we'll rest a bit, okay? As they ready themselves to go, the silence of the desert is broken 
Tiffany goes, Mom, shh, it's a car. In their relief, they forget all about the dangers of the desert. I'm like, oh, thank God. We got help. We got help. Why didn't it stop? Shelly feels uneasy. And more so when the car turns and faces them. You could hear the engine just make the noise of when somebody has pushed the accelerator to the floor. It dawns on Shelley that far from rescue, the driver is a member of one of the notorious gangs of human smugglers from the Mexican border. Run! Tip, grab the camera! I don't know where this energy came from. I was just running for my life. There was no other thoughts, just, I'm getting out of here. I guarantee you, if you're gonna kill my kids, I will shoot you. Shelley's bravado pays off, and at the last moment, the driver veers away. That person did try to kill us. Oh, why did you try and run over? Come here. No, don't come All these things out there that could have attacked us, the mountain lions, the rattlesnakes, and the only thing that messed with us was our own race. Not the wildlife, the human race. Morning brings a return of the relentless heat, and with it, their chances of getting out alive decrease. I knew we would not make it through the second day. I already knew that. Their only hope of survival now is Roger, but he's struggling as he tries anything to quench his thirst. When I first put the pieces of cactus in my mouth, that was great for a second. And realizing when the moisture goes away from what's in your mouth, it turns to like a sawdust. Though disgusting, the cactus has given him a few tiny drops of moisture. That one cactus saved my butt. It's been 24 hours now since the girls have had any water, and they too are desperate. We've kind of lost our mind at this point. We're way dehydrated. Mama, can I tell you something weird? What? In our science class, we were told that you can drink your own pee. Really? And I said, oh, I don't, uh, that can't be good. Mommy, I just have to have something. I'm so thirsty. I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, well, we are so thirsty. So I end up peeing in this Gatorade jug. They badly need to take on liquids. In these conditions, you can lose up to 10% of your body weight through fluid loss. More than that can be fatal. Yeah, I will never forget the taste. It's absolutely disgusting. And I'm like, okay, I gotta just do it. I gotta do it. And then I made Michaela. Drink it. Just wipe your mouth. It's just so sickening. You can never, ever even imagine to bring yourself to do that. You can almost feel the weight pushing your body into the dirt and the sand. I wouldn't let him down. I'd already let him down enough. With no sign of help, Shelly makes a last attempt to get attention by starting a fire. And the sun's getting higher and higher. I'm thinking, where in the world is Roger? He couldn't have made it. I told you I'd come back now, Roger? What? At last, it seems their prayers are answered. Roger's here. I heard him. Really, Mama? Where? Yeah. Roger! 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 He ain't 
close to us at all. But your mind takes a vacation. Can you hear him? Roger 2 is showing symptoms of advanced dehydration. Lack of water stops vital impulses being sent to the brain and causes blurred vision. Now his body is giving up. There comes a point, and this is when you really know you're in trouble. You stop sweating. Because now there's no moisture left in your body to get out of your pores. But however tough it is, the thought of Shelley and the kids drives him on. You think about your family. You can't give up. At last, Roger's determination seems to have paid off. I saw a vehicle coming right towards me. I knew that at that time of day, that was not going to be a human smuggler. I knew that. I thought everything was going to be okay then. Finally, Roger thinks he's found the help that's going to save his family. Oh, my God. I, I'm so my girls need help. I, I hardly talk because there's no moisture and I'm not saying I need help. Please. Uh, agua. I, agua. What was that, amigo? The girls are thinking we got ourselves a genuine legal. Yeah. Ain't that right, amigo? No, no. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. Thirsty? You, you want a drink? Please. Oh, here we go. Roger's appearance has changed so drastically that he's mistaken for an illegal immigrant. The most helpless feeling a person could ever have in their, in their life. And I'm like, what else? What else could happen? I knew that Shelly and those kids were running on empty out there. Now, well into their third day, the girls' chances of surviving get less with every step they take. I kept thinking, I wonder if Roger's made it. Has he passed on? Do I need to keep walking? Mama, I can't go on no more. After two days without water, the effects of dehydration are causing the children's small bodies to shut down. Mama, just shoot me. Please shoot me, Mama. I really didn't want to live anymore because it was painful. As soon as she said that, I mean, my heart just sunk. Come on, my sweetie. We'll do it together. Just one foot after another, okay, honey? She just keep pushing us forward. I knew I had to keep going. I can't lose these kids. I brought them here on Earth. I can't give up. It's taken Roger two days to walk just 13 miles in the suffocating heat. Now he's losing his own battle for survival. I didn't have anything left in my tank mentally, I think, at that point. I couldn't feel any pain or anything anymore. Everything was just starting to get like a hot numbness. As Roger gives up all hope, yet again he sees something on the horizon. That truck came right up the same exact path that the prior one had come, right at me. Roger? He'd recognize me because he's calling me by my first name right away. Against all odds, the driver knows Roger. And I realize that he's one of my customers from work. It was pretty cool. <laughs> but very emotional. Roger is safe. But a few miles away, the girls can't go on anymore. With no shade, all the Chelly can do is bury her kids in the sand to cool them down. 
I crawl to her on my stomach, and I'm so weak, and I just start putting dirt on her, and I can never get her covered. She's crying for help, and I can't help her. It's a last desperate attempt to protect them from the heat. But deep down, Shelley knows it's too late. Between the cries out for help, in the, um, wanting to be dead, you never will forget. When the rescue services arrive, there's still only one thing on Roger's mind. Sorry, the girls, the girls and their mother. He says, we're gonna take you to the hospital. I said, sure ass, you're taking me to our damn hospital. I said, I'm getting my family. They're out there, we gotta get girls, sir. Girls, I can show you what they are. Girls, we gotta find them. They drive for hours, but there's no sign of Shelley and the girls in the vast wilderness. I thought their chances were, at that point, probably 50-50 at the best. Out of nowhere, there's the sound of a car. Did you hear that? And I start crawling on my hands and knees. Please, 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 please. With as dry of a mouth as I have, you're dehydrated, you're weak, and yelling for all you're worth. Not that, please, where? Well, they kept on going. They never looked in the rear view. I was just so dehydrated, I could barely move myself. I didn't cover myself. I just I laid there on the dirt. They're definitely looking for us. And they're gonna come back. We just gotta hang in there. And there was silence. It's like, the bell has rung. This is your last day. Roger's beginning to lose hope that he'll find the girls alive. Is this right? I didn't know anymore if it was going to be a rescue situation and pray like heck that it's not going to be a recovery situation. Yeah, that could be them. At last, the smoke of a fire gives Roger hope that the girls may still be alive. Hey, that's our footprints. I recognize it. day, I could tell that they were from the girls because Tiffany and Michaela were wearing these sandals that had little circles for the tread. So now I'm really encouraged. The full rescue team is mobilized, but they're almost out of time. Shelley can do nothing except watch her children die. And watching them dehydrate. That's memories, that's images that you never forget. <laughs> Just as she's given up all hope, she hears a vehicle. <sighs> so I came up, and that's when I seen that it was the ranger. So it was right there on the cusp of life and death when we actually did get the help. It was like having the weight of the world taken off your shoulders. Because I didn't have to fight no more. Oh, my girls. <laughs> my girls. But the family's ordeal is far from over. Michaela. It freaked me out. Mama! 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 I ran up the hill. I had no energy, but I ran up the hill. Mama! Mama, she's not moving! I thought, well, in the midst of trying to find somebody to help us, she'd passed away. 
you go from so excited, we're saved, we're saved, and then thinking, I didn't do it in time. They kept trying to wake her up. They could not wake her at all. The trauma has been too much for five-year-old Michaela, and her kidneys have stopped working. Not, not something that um, you want to see your kids go through, let alone be the cause of. They had the chaplain come in and pray with us, and I'm thinking, the only time I've ever heard a chaplain coming in, somebody's in the hospital, is when you're going to lose that person. I didn't want to lose my sister. She's very important to me. I woke up and I looked down at my arm and I had an IV in my arm. And I remember looking to the side of me and seeing my mom. I was so happy that everybody was alive. They say a human can only last out in that desert eight hours without water. Now, we last a lot longer than that. <laughs>